Welcome to White Lecture Online. Before we take a closer look at what complex numbers really are and how to work with them and, and what they really mean in terms of the number line and the complex plane, we're going to take a closer look at imaginary numbers. Again, that deals with the number i, which is really, by def definition, the square root of negative 1. But what does i squared then mean? Well, we're tempted to do the following. We know that i squared is simply i times i, which would be the square root of 1 times the square root of 1. And we know by a previous definition that that would be equal to the square root of the two numbers multiplied together. But in this case, that is not correct. So by definition, we're not allowed to do that. When we have the square root of negative 1 multiplied times the square root of negative 1, that does not equal the square root of the product of the two numbers because negative 1 times negative 1 gives you a positive 1 and the square root of positive 1 is equal to 1. But that's not the case. i squared is not equal to 1 because we can't make this transition. What we should do instead is the following. We should say that i squared is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is essentially the square root of negative 1 quantity squared. And the square of a radical undoes the radical, which gives us a negative 1, and that is indeed correct. i squared is indeed equal to a negative 1. i squared is not equal to a positive 1 then i cubed can be written as the product of i times i squared. i squared now we realize is equal to negative 1, and i of course is simply i, so this becomes negative i. With other words, i cubed is the same as negative i. And then i to the fourth power can be written as i squared times i squared. Since i squared is equal to negative 1, this becomes equal to negative 1 times negative 1, which gives us a positive 1. So i to the fourth power equals a positive 1 which then means that i to the fifth power is i to the fourth power times i, and i to the fourth power is 1, so we get 1 times i, or simply i again, which means that i to the fifth is the same as i, which means that i to the fifth is also equal to the square root of negative 1. i to the sixth, well that can be written as the product of i to the fourth times i squared, i to the fourth is equal to 1, i squared is equal to negative 1, so that's equal to negative 1 i to the sixth is the same as i squared, which is equal to negative 1. Then, i to the seventh can be written as i to the fourth times i cubed, since i to the fourth is equal to 1, and i cubed is equal to negative i, that we got from over here, the negative i times 1 is equal to negative i, which means that i to the seventh is exactly the same as i cubed. And finally, i to the eighth power is the same as the product of i to the fourth times i to the fourth, and since i to the 4th is equal to 1, that's 1 times 1, which is 1. So i to the 8th is the same as i to the 4th, which is equal to 1. And of course, at this point, you can simply continue i to the 9th, i to the 10th, and so forth, i to any power, and you should be able to figure out what that is equal to. It will either be equal to i, negative 1, negative i, or 1, depending upon what that power is, of course. We're looking for an integer power, otherwise, a little different. Now we have other ways in which we can figure it out, but that's definitely beyond the realm of this course. So if you know this, that's already a good start in being able to manipulate imaginary numbers and then later on complex numbers. So that's is how it's done.